guys! Welcome back to High Crime, a show where I get very stoned and talk about a fucked up serial killer. You know I'm flying high, I'm way up in the sky, don't even have to try. Today, I've got some goodies. These are from my dear friend Will. He made brownies. Look at this. Are you fucking kidding me with this? So he told me to eat the whole thing. I'm not, so I'm a little bitch, but I am gonna eat a lot of it. And since Will provided the drugs, he got to pick the serial killer. See how that works? This is fucking delicious. I might eat the whole thing. I'm gonna eat the leaf. Mm. Okay. I ate like almost half. I'm also allergic to dairy, so this will be fun. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Wait my hour, see what happens. Thank you, William. Okay guys, see you in a minute. <laughs> it's just so good, I can't stop. <laughs> That's enough of that. Okay. So today, wow, I got two for ya. So, Will gave me the drugs, Will gets the killer. Today we're gonna be covering Leonard Lake and Charles Ng. Um, these two sadistic bastards. So sick, so twisted, once again. Trigger warning. Pretty graphic. So if you don't like that stuff, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Just go away. So I'm gonna talk about both of their childhoods because they make perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Leonard Lake was born October 29th, 19... He, from the get, was like a very highly sexually active child. He was sexually obsessed with his younger sister. And his older brother got hit in the head by a train. <laughs> That's so fucked up. It's not funny. It's not funny, okay? So his older brother was very abusive to Leonard and his younger sister. And Leonard told his younger sister, I'll protect you if you give me a beach. Mm -mm. Yuck. Incest is where I draw the line. Okay, um, his parents separated when he was really young and he moved in with his grandparents and, a, and his mom abandoned him, like took the younger sister to live somewhere and didn't take Leonard. So there's your like hatred of women abandonment issues right there. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Freud. <laughs> Leonard would also dissolve mice in acid. Uh, apparently he had like this little mouse town and he would take them and just dip their alive bodies into oh, like a vat of acid or chemicals, whatever. He said it, they would turn into like green goo. I don't like that. Okay, Charles Ng, uh, equally as fucked childhood. Well, I don't know. He was born in Hong Kong. He had a very abusive father. Fun. And when his father was beating him, he was telling him, this is for your own good. This is gonna make you stronger. I love you. I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah. Okay, well, like... My mom got me the wrong American Girl doll. So, like, we all have trauma. I asked her for Felicity. And she got me a Kirsten in a Felicity outfit. She got it on eBay. 
I'm nine. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> when he was in grade school, he started fires a lot. And he was sent to a private school in England where he started to learn to steal and send sexually explicit letters to the teachers. So he joined the Marines using a fake passport, but he was convicted of stealing weapons. So he fled, I, th I think, and then he was caught and sentenced. No, reverse it. He went to prison and escaped. So he was a man on the run and he reached out to a dude he met on um, like exchanging letters from like a survivalist magazine ad. I explained that perfectly. That man was, you guessed it, Leonard Lake. Um, just a perfect pair, a perfect sexually depraved, fucked up duo. So Lake became the father figure for Ng. He would like introduce him to this world of um, sexual sadism and he's like, thanks dad. You know, why don't you just like throw a ball around? You know what I mean? Throw the old pigskin around. You don't have to do that. I don't know. I'm no dad. Although I think I would be a fantastic dad. Look at what I'm wearing. <laughs> Come on. So in the span of one year from like 18, <laughs> 1892, uh, 1982 to 1983, they would kill, they think like up to 25 people in the San Francisco Bay area. Um, this all took place in Will, Will, Will Wooster? Will, what's that? Willsieville. And they did not discriminate. They killed everybody. They killed even babies. Um, sorry. They killed up to two entire families. Um, they would kill up the husband quickly and then they would torture the baby to get whatever they wanted out of the mom. And they would use the baby's pain. Charles is fun little work time um rah rah chant is no gun no fun no thrill no kill no kill no thrill daddy dies mommy cries and baby fries i can't believe i fucking nailed that so leonard at a young age I guess, became obsessed with this book called The Collector by John Foles. Mm -hmm. And he became obsessed with the idea of, it was called the M lady. So it's like the, the perfect woman. I don't think that's correct. And he also had tapes of him um, talking about like his fucking manifesto um, about like his philosophy, I guess they're called the philosophy tapes. <sighs> I bet he was a fucking philosophy major. They're the same guy with the fucking guitar at the party. And you're like, I am not going home with him tonight. And then you had two Bahama mamas. And all of a sudden, you are being serenaded in his dorm room. Okay, I'm not speaking from experience here. Whoa, amber is the color of your energy. Operation Miranda set out specific rules for the girls. And I'm, I'm gonna read you some of the rules. Yes, I got new glasses, thank you. Okay. okay, ready? Rule number one, I must always be ready to service my master. I must be clean, brushed, and made up with my cell neat. Two, I must never steal and, wow. It's really, you really can't read it, I swear. It's not me, it's, you see? I must never speak unless spoken to, unless in bed. I must never lock my mat. It's an, I'm not trying to, it's just happening. Look my master in the eye, but must keep my eyes to my down. Guys, I really dicked that one. I dicked it good. All right, 
whatever. But must keep my eyes downcast. Three, I must never show my disrespect, either verbally or silent. I must never cross my arms or legs in front of my body or clench my fists and unless eating, must always keep my lips parted. I fucking hate this guy, dude. Oh, fuck this guy. So at some point, let me take my glasses off. Leonard meets a woman named Cricket and they fall in love hard. And we don't know we. <laughs> I am a very well-respected, important member of the true crime community. <clears throat> they don't know if Cricket is involved with any of this. Most likely she is. Like she lived on that weird compound. She knows, knew what was going on, but she was never convicted because she wouldn't tell them any information unless she got full immunity. So that means she wouldn't get charged with any of the 19 fucking murders. I think it's 19, whatever. That's wild. But also, I guess a lot of the eviden evidence was very circumstantial. So they didn't really have anything on her. I don't know. I do so much fucking research. So Lake would kill people to steal their identities. And two of those people were his brother and his best friend um, because they looked sort of like him. He killed his brother though to, I guess, also collect his social security check so he could build his torture bunker. Great, good, that's nice. So they built this bunker and they filmed them torturing and killing these women. Mostly what they did was kidnap women, keep them for however long, and torture and kill them. Like I said, Lake was looking for his M lady woman. Um, so that perfect submissive woman. So they at one point see an ad in the paper for someone selling a Honda Prelude. They go check it out and it's this guy named Paul Cosner and Paul, poor Paul, um, happened to look like Leonard. And so they killed him and they stole his car and his sister kept bugging the police. She was like, where's my brother? The heck? And they were like, we can't really list him. We, we can't investigate him as, wow, where does that go? <laughs> it's here, it's with me, it's present, but I can't access it. I don't know, we can't really like, make someone a missing person over the age of six, which I've never heard before, whatever. Okay, um, but the cops were like, but we can look for the car. Okay, not a human life, but you can look for a fucking Honda Prelude. So after she kept calling and calling and calling about, hey, where's the car, where's the car, where's the car? The cops finally found the car when Leonard and Charles tried to steal something so the cops come and they're like, what's going on here? Um, and Charles fucking splits. <laughs> he just fucking leaves. He's now a full blown, full blown fugitive. Oh, and at some point in all of this or before they were caught, they went to jail and Leonard escaped and Charles went to prison. Um, oh no, they got arrested. I don't remember. Are you guys following? I can't believe you're not following all this. And so they're like, hey, you need to come with me. Cause I think they also found a gun with like a, an illegal silencer on it. I'm remembering so much. But when Lake was captured, he always had cyanide pills. That's chocolate in my throat. Sewn into his pants. He was just one of those fucking like survivalist pieces of shit whatever we are living houses okay get over it weirdos so this coward died in the interrogation room so he just fucking fuck you charles 
they caught Charles in Canada because he tried to steal from a store. They are the worst thieves ever. <laughs> and then he had the longest fucking trial or it took so long to get to trial because he kept delaying it. Like he kept firing his attorney, like saying he was sick or like, what's it called? Like time difference needing adjustment to. You are dumb, unattractive, overweight, unworthy, untalented. What the fuck ever. He just kept pushing and pushing it until 14 years later, they went to trial. He even called a juror at her house from his cell. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Or he can't, he didn't go there. Why would he go there? He can't go there. Hey buddy, when you talk about boundaries. And he's in jail and will be for the rest of his life. Am I missing anything? Probably. Wow, I think, I think I did it. I'm so proud of us. It was just really a team effort. Thank you, Sir William, for the drugs. They were absolutely delicious. I do plan on nibbling on that all week. You guys, if you supply the drugs, you get to pick the killer or even an event or another crime that you'd like me to cover, I'm open. I change, I adapt as an artist and a human. I hate myself right now. <laughs> Okay, you guys. I love you. Bye. Cause I can't see everything.